Welcome to the 2018 SEMA Show. You know, the best cars, engineers, and engines in the world all end up in Las Vegas once a year for the SEMA Show. But the SEMA Show's been lacking one thing, and that's an award specifically designed for engines. Hence, Masters of Motors. The main prize is the Ingenuity Award, an 80-pound hunk of aluminum designed, engineered, and made by the folks at JE Pistons. And then there will be class awards for categories like European, domestic, import, nostalgia, power adder, race, and a fan favorite award that you can participate in voting online. Over the next 36 hours, a team of judges, including myself, David Freiberger, Steve Brule, and Mike Kojima are gonna scour the show floor in specific zones, pick the engines we think are coolest, get together, and then ultimately award the Masters of Motors. So this contest is basically to figure out what is the perfect motor or engine, and we've got a bunch of different categories, which is a relief because there's no one perfect engine. There's so many different ways that you can go with it. But I'm looking for basically style in the nostalgia category. In race, obviously I'm looking for something completely off the chain that's like set big records or put down horsepower nobody's ever seen before. And in all the other categories, basically, I'm just waiting to be wowed. Well, like I'm a racer, and so I look at function over form. I'm not in the chrome, I'm not in the pretty. You know, like, uh, I like clean, I like simple, but I like badass. And I like uh, engineering and I like innovation, but I don't like clutter, excessive stuff, and I don't like, um, I, I, I especially hate things that are just done for cosmetic purposes only, and I hate things that are done for novelty or shock value or whatever. I think that's stupid. So, yeah, tough judge, yeah. I'm a racer. Well, you know, being an ex-drag boat racer, it's all about the bling. So, there's, <laughs> there's some uh, attention to detail, of course, but really, for this, I'm looking more at function. I mean, some real engineering going on. I mean, not bolt-ons, I'm looking for something more than that. You know, people who actually manufactured, fabricated, were guys who built an engine. and. You know, for me, that all comes back really kind of to NA roots, where you make a lot of power, you don't just turn a knob. So my favorites kind of that I was looking at today was a lot of the high horsepower NA stuff. So for me, what I'm looking for tonight is something that kind of says SEMA. You know, the point of the show is to bring the house, bring the best thing you got, whether that's a vintage engine that has a kind of a twist on it or maybe a modern engine that's a full-on race motor. I don't have anything in my head yet, but I want it to stand out as being SEMA worthy, being worthy of considered masters of motors. All right, so we start here. Like, <laughs> it's a pretty good place to start, actually. Pretty <laughs> yeah, pretty rad. That's two LSs. So does anybody have any history on this one? I mean, as far as it's not welded together, it's not a hybrid, no, it's, it's they actually yeah, cast they it, they had a crankshaft, had a camshaft, they developed all of this and... Yep. Think of figuring completely. out the firing order and the balance, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, 12 cylinders are... It's aren't, like a... It's, it's like a deal, deal. Yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 It's but. a 12-cylinder balance and everything, and then they 3D printed the casting cores and everything, so that's really innovative too, I think. Look yeah, at the yeah. intake manifold, it's like a lengthened sniper. It is. That's what it is, actually. <laughs> okay. It's long enough for Mike to Kojima to sleep in. I know the idea on this one started <laughs> out as two engines welded together, and then they went from there and actually made it a unique cast. They started line, there, so. though, right, with the hybrid, and they were... Yeah. yeah I mean, that's I that is, that's as grassroots as it gets. So I'm offering dinner to anybody that can tell me the firing order. <laughs> not, not me. No. <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all stop at eight. You will not be yeah. buying me in and out tonight. That's a lot of combinations. I don't know. To me, to me, an engine like this, like the, you know, this is the essence of what we're doing here tonight, right? Like looking at all this different stuff. Like we're going to see vintage engines stuff like that. But like if we're looking at somebody who's actually gone into full engineering mode to make something from scratch, it's it's incredible. I mean, there's a lot of LS swaps here, but this is completely <laughs> this is right. way better. This is are these ass. the guys from Australia? Yeah. So these are guys, if I remember right from last year when they were kind of doing the development stuff, they both have full-time jobs. Hmm. They did this, if I remember correctly, in because their they're spare mental. time. Because they're mentally ill, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how much spare time they have, yeah. but they need to get a life somewhere. <laughs> in this day and age, this is the way to make an LS engine interesting. Yeah, yeah. You Absolutely. know, They can make huge power, they can be awesome, but this is interesting. Yep. Agreed. This this is absolutely cool. All right, onward and upward, or maybe downward, downward. from here. It's downhill <laughs> from here. It's fewer cylinders from here. <laughs> it's not CNC. 
somebody actually built this with their hands on a machine. But the funny thing up? about this thing is no, too, like no, when you look at like a V10, back. like a V10 Ford motor or something like the, the modular Ford engines, like when you look at just the intake, the way the intake runners, the whole thing is very, it's kind of similar well, to like a, to one of the, like it a It looks like an LS, but you know, what you need with 904 cubic inches is really long intake runners. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I wonder what peak, where peak power occurs, probably like 4,200. I mean, it's 9, 900 inches. You're giving it inches. something, that's 1,800. It could have a camshaft, camshafts that are 280 at 50, and it might make it to 5,000, but that's a 13, 12 or 13 inch long intake yeah. runner. Cranking this thing weighs, has to weigh close to 100 pounds. Mountain Motor Pro Stock with an 830 inch motor has an 80 pound crankshaft in it. Yeah. yeah. And it has about, and it has a five and a quarter inch stroke. So Light. There's another quarter on each of these things. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is what you need is a dual overhead cam motor in order to be able to run less than 5,000 RPM. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get it. If only it no, had It's turbos. really bitching though. It's hot rodding. Yeah. But you know what? It's not engineering. Like, um... Oh? Uh? Why, why, why are... <laughs> well, I, I, I get where he's going here. Like, he's the official naysayer. But I know what you're saying. It's blunt force trauma, to use Brian's expression. It's not, uh, you know, polished. Your, your piston speed is going to be ridiculous. Your stroke to rod length ratio. At 5,000 RPM? Yeah, like, but why? I, I mean, wanted my dually. You're, you're making a gasoline diesel. I mean, yeah. that's why I wanted my dually. That's why it's cool. <laughs> it's the best of both worlds. But you're going to have poor mechanical efficiency, poor volumetric efficiency, so? poor adiabatic efficiency. But, but efficiency polished. is for guys with small but motors who make no power. But the awesomeness that's efficiency is saying. really off the charts here. So this was something with like 44 oh. inch wheels. Look, the one thing we could all agree on, I think, in this is you're looking at something that was done 20 years ago, and it was worthy enough for all of us to sit around the table and go, yeah, this needs cool. to be highlighted. I, I, yeah. And there wasn't a lot of discussion about right. it. It was just plain yeah. old, yep. Yep. <laughs> Down the road we go. Okay. <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. I mean, if we're, I'm not a huge Mercedes guy or whatever, but when we were walking around checking stuff out, like this one jumped out at me just for sheet metal intake manifold. Yeah, I don't know the internals of the thing, but there's a couple of pretty healthy turbos on it. It's a drag radial style car and a body style that I would have never conceived someone would do that with. I'm sure it took a lot of custom work to make this thing run. I mean, I see a lot of billet on the cam covers. I see sensors that look like a different engine style sensors. They can control it with an ECU. This is really cool. It's a legit race car. Well, and the extra effort it takes versus the LS, which is just the plug and play. I mean, this thing has a completely fabricated, you know, front accessory drive setup. Yep. It was Obviously, easy. sheet metal intake, you know, and it's, yeah. he's got a throttle body in the back. He's probably got an intercooler in the thing, but. Yeah, big one. Yeah, yeah, big water to air deal. Yeah, big water to air. I don't think it's run yet, though, so that's... Yeah, you're right. No injector harness plumbing does say this hasn't run yet. But I... this company that built the thing is known for building 10-second streetcar Mercedes. They take an AMG, hop it up, boom, mid-10s. Yeah. Yeah, how, how many people would have just taken this engine out and put something easier in? Me. <laughs> to me, so far, like, this thing, at, you know, this thing fits the bill of effort. Like, we've seen three very different engines so far, and all three of them have a lot of like actual effort. Where the Schubeck motor is a complete scratch build, the LS deal being a complete scratch build, this thing with, you know, basically custom machine front accessory drive, motor plates, the whole works. It's a lot of effort here. But I will take your point. No injector no harness tells me it hasn't run yet. Yeah. Demerits, three demerits. Yeah. Hasn't Demerit. even run, it's not tuned. Who knows what it is. I like Man, the way you cool. have all this positive attitude. The human rain Thank cloud strikes on. again. <laughs> So Brulee's already shaking his head. That is not what it seems. <laughs> Brulee just shook his head like a disappointed father when he saw this. Basically, this is proof of how far people will go to have an LS engine in anything. <laughs> this looks like and a big block to it. Ford. Yeah, it looks like a 429 or something, but no, that is an LS engine. I heard when they built this car, they were, the builder, they were concerned that the builder forgot to put the right engine in it. Really? When it showed up, they said, where's the Lingenfelter LS? Well, Where can, did it go? You can get the front distributor drive set up for the LS engine, so obviously That's they've done not. that. But look at the cloaking that they've done to make it look like it's on the intake so and everything. So what's weird is the front distributor drive would mount on the front, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah, so it's in the weird. valley. Yeah. It's actually in the valley. Yeah, they so dug it into the valley. Are these legit spark plug wires? Are they going no, look somewhere? Where they, look where they look where they're routed. They go... This side is convincing. They go to the neighborhood of the spark plug? Yeah, they do. They look like they hit it. Except the ones that run all the way down under the motor. Is there a second set that runs underneath yes. it? Yes. Wow. 
the actual the actual plug wires run from so the bottom. So they just up. use the heat shield to hide the exactly. fact. Wow. There's two That's... wires. There's two wires going into each heat shield. Like, you can't trust one's anyone real anymore. and one is faux. Holy cow. The accessory drive gives it away, although look at the work they went to put an actual Ford mechanical water pump on it. Yeah. Realistically, what, what was the other choice? Put a 302 in it or a, a stroke, you know, 347? Yeah. Because even a 351 is going to start taking up room. Yeah. Coyote's Coyote going to be a nightmare. Well, everything my up. personal Coyote opinion, this is a better program than putting a Coyote in it. I know the Ford yeah. guys think that that's just absolute travesty, but you have to hack the front suspension yeah, on these cars so, so bad to put those in. Honestly, I think the Shoeback 904 would have been the best fit here. You're right. Right. Only okay. if you didn't want front wheels or tires. <laughs> Out of the fender, yeah. about right. right here. Yeah. It'd be perfect. I think a K28 no. too in there. Would be there awesome. you go. See, I like it. I like where your head's at here. Two of them. Y block. Yeah. Two. Two. Yeah. We have Y block with twins, but not Turbo's centrifugal superchargers. These sometimes known as the WHY block. <laughs> Why? Give us Y block history. Me? Yeah. Well, it came after the Flathead and before the Windsor, and it was their standard V8. It came in the Thunderbird. They were 292s and 312s. But this one has two torque storms on it, and you probably have more experience with those than any of us. They're decent blowers. They're not necessarily big, huge horsepower, but they're very effective. And the convenient part is they're all billet, self-contained, don't have to run extra oil lines or Which anything. Which is cool. You bolt them on the brackets, you know, you need another 150, 200 horsepower, there you go. Huh. But do you think two of them is doing anything or is that decorative? <coughs> Can't be not doing anything. Well, I think, yeah, they, it's gotta be doing something. But like, to me, the big effort here is that factory looking air cleaner is actually the hat. Oh, the hat, that is pretty cool. Gotta give it that. And the fact that the guy actually stuck a Y block in this thing and tried to do something with it. And I have been roasted to my bones by making fun of those things on Bankshift before, and the Y Block community has like come to my house. Well, and, that's with because Kazi has torches. made them the kill. And well, Engine Master's challenge, these things and have guys, actually won. guys make horsepower with them. There are guys there's like Y Block clubs, and these guys drag race them and stuff. But it's They're it's definitely most, arcane. They are the most dedicated Engine Master's people out there. Crazy. Absolutely, they're crazy. The thing is, I don't like decorative boost, and I want to believe that this is actually doing something. And it probably is doing something, but just not all of it. I mean, I think we'd all agree that this isn't a new idea, a new concept. It no. was just executed well. And it's just, it's cool. It's cool factor. Here's the thing that's going to shaft all of us on this whole conversation. That's actually just a cloned LS motor. No, it really is. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Big Chief heads were the first litmus test of that is a street car or that's not a street car. When these came out in the original fastest street car shootouts in 92, 93, people were like, it's a big chief, you can't do that. Look how far we've come. And there will be people watching this that don't know what a big chief head is, so we need to explain that too. It yeah. started out as Pontiac's version of Pro Stock when they moved from the 24 degree aluminum Chevrolet heads or the 26 degree. And all the modifications that guys like Lee Shepard at Rear and Morrison did with the 24 degree stuff, they would spend hundreds of hours welding, changing valve angles. Well, finally Pontiac said, well, let's get in the game. And Pontiac developed an 18 degree cylinder head. Chevrolet then countered That's with an absolute Chief Pontiac, get it? Symmetrical port cylinder head that Lee Shepard then got a hold of. And it was supposedly 10 horsepower better than the Big Chief, which mm -hmm. was an 18 degree head to start. You know, Steve, what I'm going to need is some more detailed answers from you in the future. <laughs> okay, so I knew one answer and I had to go with it. No, no. it's pretty good. But this is a 632 twin turbo deal. Obviously, EFI. I didn't ask the guy if he's running it on methanol, but if you look at the volume the of injectors. Yes, he's got 16 injectors in the thing. And to your point, those are big hanging injectors. And yeah. to Mike's point, they do have harnesses on them, so we know it, it is run at some point. No Kojima demerits on the harness. What look I know look about at that mechanical this. fuel pump that's down that's there. That's because they need well, so much that fuel. Much yeah. fuel. Electric pumps would have a tough time. But here we are, 2018, and a big chief uh, headed big block has us in Rapture. At least three true. of us. I, I can't believe. speak. I can't speak for Kojima because Mikey no likey anything. Mikey no, no likey anything. I like it. Really? He likes yeah. it. He likes it. Mark Mikey likes it. Unheard of. Let's find somebody doesn't like. It. Okay. Calabunga. iconic but very old engine architecture here. If you don't know what you're looking at, this is actually a flathead Ford, 
but it has a set of cylinder heads on it known as Arden. It was basically an Arden conversion. Zora Arcus Duntoff, R. Dunn, the legendary Chevrolet engineer, came up with these cylinder heads many, many decades ago, and they were designed to actually be shipped to England to be used on flathead Ford V8s that were powering garbage trucks at the time. They were having big problems. The garbage trucks did not have enough horsepower to pull the garbage up a hill. So these heads were designed to take the flathead V8 that was in the car, in the trucks, and make more horsepower. What Andy has done is elevated that kind of basic architecture almost into a sculpture, a running, working sculpture, but you know, the blower is certainly better in every way than an old Scott would be, but it's all billet machined and everything. The, the Stromberg carburetors, the 97s, have been all cleaned up. They're all beautiful. Same as the heads. And look at the detail in how the fins, I mean, I'm talking show car stuff right. now. This is not about horsepower. Right. That is not what this program is. The, the detail of all of the fins, how it carries through from the intake to the exhaust, and look at the spark plug wire yeah. separators and the original cloth type spark plug wires. I mean, this thing to me is epic. This is one of my favorite hot rods ever. What do you say, Steve? I agree with Freiburger. This thing is awesome. I mean, just the detail, it is what it is. I mean, we've seen these before, but never quite like this that I recall. I mean, this thing is just, it, it goes beyond detail and great execution and all that. It really is at this point, it's running art, like you said. Yeah. To me, the vintage category of the Masters of Motors shootout should be a lot more about craft and like, wow. I mean, if we had a Kazi motor here that was making tons of power, I think I could accept that. Right. But the vintage motors at the SEMA show tend to be street rod stuff, and they tend to be more show oriented, which is why I love this thing. There are places in Vegas you can go and buy an $80 peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is an $80 peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> It's no way better than it's. About it's right way now. better than. Well, <laughs> your mom, your mom can make you yeah. a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for fifty cents, yeah. and it's going to be good. But you can elevate the craft of anything. This is the eighty dollars peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and it's awesome. Next, yeah. This one just smells like a race car. I mean, it, it's got from the oil to the race fuel. I thought it was yeah. Freiburger, but it actually is the motor. <laughs> If I smelled deal. like this, you'd lick behind my ear every <laughs> single day. <laughs> you might be right about that. It's getting weird. There's ballast. Yeah, look at the ballast Show lead. Don't have ballast. So this this car, just Justin Martin's Nova, is uh, has for a little while held the record in a class called Limited Drag Radio, which is one of the most uh, kind of at this point like gets a lot of attention. It's a small tire class, uh, you know, weight, some restrictions, but huge horsepower engines. Pete Harrell built this one. Obviously, fuel injected big block Chevy. It's serious business. It's gone. This car is gone in the very low fours in the eighth mile, you know, 170, 180 plus. Like the thing's making huge suds. You know, the yeah. motor probably makes an area 900 NA, then just start multiplying it every 15 pounds. So by the time he gets to 40 pounds, it's, you know, it's 3,000 plus potentially. I mean, there's some loss in there, but no, it's all of it. What I like about this is, you know, a bunch of the stuff we've looked at tonight is. There's a beauty element to it. We're going the same way here because this there's is, no pretense to this at this all. Is, this dude, is a, this this is, is a race engine. This is jigsaw straight out of the comic <laughs> yeah, books, yeah. man. This yeah. is detailed by Krylon. I mean, it's a race car. And also, you notice every place it's blown up, there's just some RTV plugging holes. What I like is we can tell how many rocker arms you broke right. by the push rod things in the valve covers. But if you're not breaking stuff, you're not racing at this no, level. No, no, this right. level. Is this supplementary mechanical injection? I was looking at that as well, trying to determine. Yeah, we've got a mechanical pump down here. So you see the EFI on the rails. Yeah. Right. And you see this also hitting the rail. But you yes. gotta yeah. follow because he's probably water. he's probably feeding well, the whole thing. It might be water, water mass. Yeah. See, With these the are lines. connected here, yeah. and they're all daisy chained to each other. So is it like a down nozzle? Probably or? A water mass. Too. You know, one of the other things, Mike, with crankcase vacuum is it's not just helping ring seal, it's also a great tuning aid because when you've got boosted or nitrous applications, you monitor crankcase vacuum very closely because you can watch a run and during the run, if all of a sudden that drops or flutters and levels off, it tells you that the rings are bouncing around and you've actually lost crankcase vacuum. So it tells you it may have gone into a very slight bit of detonation. And so it's a great tuning tool too. You can watch crankcase vacuum as far as for tuning. That's interesting. It's awesome that Yoda's here with us. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> Onward upper. Uh. Yeah, this thing's badass, guys. Lay it on us, Freiburger. I'm diesel. 
ignorant. <laughs> this is on you guys. I really don't know. So, okay, that makes well, it's, two a, of it's us. a Cummings engine, right? It's a Cummins, yeah, it so, is. It's not Cummings. Yeah, you just got to delete the G and you're fine. Yeah. Inline six Cummins that is compound turbocharged. So you have the atmospheric turbo is a 96 uh, or a Garrett 96 millimeter turbo. And there is, it is four speeding an 88 millimeter turbo compounding the boost as it goes into the engine. So with after cooling too, right? Yeah, this thing is gnarly. It has run Pike's Peak. It has run standing mile events. It's done a whole bunch of stuff and it has to be making obscene horsepower. So is it a race engine? Is it a street engine? Is it, is it a domestic engine? What is it? Is it a power adder engine? It's all of the above. It's a diesel. It's lots. It's a diesel. And to me, that's the interesting thing about what diesel performance is now, you know, and where it was and what it is. You know, diesel performance for many years was tractor pulling, almost wholly tractor pulling. And now you've, you've got guys that are building engines like this and driving them on the street. I mean, there's a load of pickup trucks around the country that are driving daily with a setup like this. Evan, what category you're in charge? Ooh. I think it's a race engine. Race engine? I think Second. it's race pipe yep. peak. Yeah. I think it's a race engine. I can buy that. Okay. I think with a wing that, that big, this thing better be a race car. <laughs> it's so, Brule, we're ignorant, but I can Me completely too. respect it, right? I have absolute respect for them. I know nothing about them, so I'm just gonna, as far as technology, I'm gonna be quiet on that part of it. But, but no, it's an engine. It makes tons of power. I love it. Rudolph Diesel, first one he ever built, ran on peanut oil. It's awesome. So yeah. behold, you guys. <laughs> okay, train me. Yeah, my, train my all favorite, of us. My favorite engine of the whole everything. You were glowing about this thing. Well, there's so much innovation here. I mean, uh, this this engine that Papadakis Racing um, builds, maybe it's not the highest horsepower per liter in the world, but I bet you it's right up there with the highest horsepower per pound. I mean, even talking F1 cars and stuff. I mean, this engine weighs about 220 pounds. You can actually like even pick it up and move it around by with yourself. With the turbo and everything? Um, well, without the turbo, okay. but um, you know, with the manifold and everything. 220 pounds, this thing makes a, a thousand reliable horsepower. It's amazing. I, there's a lot of innovation, like uh, Steph came out with his own uh, billet oil pan, and that um, ties into the, the main caps and everything. It stiffens the block. Um, it, it's uh, the, integrated with the dry sump pump. Um, he was having a problem with throwing the rocker arms off or the roller, roller rockers. So he came out with shaft rockers. Um, this that he thing, made himself? Yeah, he made himself. Wow. Mm, yeah. And you know, this thing has a pretty decent stroke, but he revs this to 8,000, I mean 9,000 RPM. So for you, this is the greatest engine package in the history of ever. Oh yeah, I mean, it's- Wow, it's, <laughs> he just went there. That's impressive, yeah. just all the way. It's, it's the power density that amazes me, not the power per cubic inch. Right, but the fact mm -hmm. that you got 220 pounds of stuff here making a thousand horsepower. Right, and, and doing it reliably, yeah. and doing it all day. Like a hard to argue. Day, like like three days of pounding, and um, you know the motors last. I was going to make some smart remark like where are the other four cylinders, but after that pitch, I That's got hard. Yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't do that. No. I mean, there's badass engines, yeah. but for the amount of weight and the amount of violence contained in that small amount of metal. Yeah, this thing's mighty mouse, man. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. That was I, a good I've heard pitch. Yeah, yeah, I got no, no, there's no right. reputation of that. <laughs> Yeah. I got no comeback. I got nothing. Yeah. Other than respect. <laughs> That's cool. What we're looking at here is uh, an NHRA legal, what we would call an A fuel engine. So this is an injected nitromethane burning Hemi, right above 430 cubic inches, makes in the neighborhood of 35 to 3,800 horsepower, depending on conditions. Naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. There is no, obviously no, you know, no blower, no, no forced induction here. The crazy thing about these engines is they are incredible, they're torque engines. So this thing going down the racetrack, it actually sees the highest amount of RPM it will see in the burnout. So this motor will not make more than 6,500 <laughs> RPM going down the racetrack. Hmm. Um, that's so, so completely the opposite from the blown alcohol stuff that sees 10 Literally backwards to it, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, the cars that run in the same class, these run in top alcohol dragster, yeah, so even the, though they're called a fuel. Right, the class that this car runs in, you can run either a blown alcohol engine or you can run uh, an injected nitromethane burning engine. And 
you know, NHRA over the years has worked back and forth, try to keep parity. The champion nationally of the class this year is a blown alcohol guy. It's been the last same guy the last four years. Megan Meyer, who races this car, her dad built the car, her dad builds the motors. Um, she's like number three or four nationally in the points. So this is a very competitive car. It qualifies Masters of Motorwise to me just because of the insane output and the fact that uh, the fact that it's all mechanical. I mean, there is nothing electronic about it. There is nothing advanced. We went from that awesome 200 pound, thousand horsepower engine that is again yeah. just just magnificent in every way. This in some ways is Stone Age because of what it's doing, but my God. But it's magnificent. It is magnificent. <laughs> is yeah. there any naturally aspirated engine on earth that makes more power than this? Good question, but I don't think there is. I don't think there is I can't either. think of anything. Not NA. Giant yeah. locomotive engines are all turbocharged. You know, you look at like, if you look at those huge diesels that are, you know, even giant stationary engines are, are all supercharged right. or turbocharged, mm -hmm. so. I can't think of anything. She's a mean lady. Love. Okay. Moving on. All right, so we have traveled to the promised land of the South Hall on your recommendation. This is the Tom Nelson twin turbo engine you've been telling us about, and you know more about it than the three of us, so what are we looking at? Well, I think we've all had a chip on our shoulder against all of the twin turbo LS engines that are all throughout this contest and everything, but I look at this one, and when we argue about whether this is a contest of appearance or engineering and horsepower, I think this package brings it all together because this thing can be stuffed to make 1,800 horsepower, but it has a hydraulic roller cam, it's drivable anywhere, and to me, the engineering of the alien billet intake manifold and the way it's hidden all the sensors, hidden the throttle bodies, figured out how to package the fuel system and everything, I think it takes it to the next level on appearance engineering, and it's about the highest horsepower street engine that you're gonna see here. So that's my pitch. It's a good mix of uh, form and function, you would say, right? Your opinion may vary. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I want to add to this, though, is that while you know, mirror image turbos were not invented by Nelson. He popularized them for the aftermarket and that helps packaging more than anything else that we've seen. Yeah, and so it. while he did that a few years ago, yeah. I think this credit is still where credit is due. Yeah, I mean, a uh, well, I mean, uh, and this is way understanding, but a well turned out engine compartment is always gonna be that, but this is, this is visually, of course, performance wise, numbers wise, amazing what you're taking. I mean, in, in addition to the way that it looks, I don't think any part in this entire engine exists on an island, right? Everything was designed with the forethought of the thing next to it. How does it all mesh together? How does it fit together? How does it look together? I mean, it's just, everything is so uniform and complete. I, I think it's... Well, like I say, for Tom, it's been awesome. a progression. I mean, it started eight, nine years, mm -hmm. what, 10 years ago, well, kind of with this mirror image turbo thing and cleaning everything up. And each time you do anything, you get better at it. And Tom's obviously kind of, you know, evolved this thing to what appears to be pretty much perfection. So here's the deal. We have a night to sleep on all this. We've looked at a ton of different engines. We've looked at stuff that was uh, four cylinder making big power. We've looked at 900 inch dual overhead cam stuff. We've landed on the twin turbo LS deal. And the building's imploding. And the building's falling over. <laughs> so the way this is gonna go down is we're gonna go back, go to sleep, and come back the next day, which would be Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. It's going to be Wednesday. Thursday. We'll reconvene this meeting on Wednesday and effectively figure out, hammer out who our class winners are and who the overall champ is. But none of these guys have made it easy on us, I don't think. No, not yeah. at all. It, this, it just gets tougher and tougher. The more that we've seen and kind of as we've walked this evening, it's, it's honestly, it's gotten harder. We whittled down initially to 25, and now it's just gotten really tough. Kojima said he gets even worse when he drinks, so you got to buy us a round of beers. Yeah. Get out of here. Awesome. <laughs> Kojima gets worse? I guess. Really? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are back. We've reconvened the meeting the next morning like we told you we would after last night's walk around. You notice that uh, three of the Musketeers are here, or four of us, but we're missing the uh, fifth man in. Mike Kojima got hung up. It's, this seer seam is insane, so he's somewhere out in the ether, and we're taking this thing by the horns, going through class by class. Yeah, we're just gonna run through Start with the class guys and work our way up to the overall. So, sport compact, uh, what do you guys Where feel? I'm, I'm down with Papa Doc, because yeah, I bought Kojima's argument on it. I think that's a clear, it. clear Slam dunk. And that's yeah. easy. So that's that, the drift car. The drift car Toyota. with all the custom pieces he made and all the stuff, that's a, yeah, signing off on that immediately. Yeah, I think that's a simple choice. Got one. All right, so Stefan. Got one. 
<laughs> Stevan Papadakis' 1,000 horsepower 2AR Toyota Sport Compact class winner. All right, moving on, uh, Euro. So we're down to the twin turbo AMG that we honestly- With, with no wiring harness on the injector. Exactly, although I like the effort, or the Ferrari Mustang, where my concern is that it's a stock long block with some turbos thrown on it for decoration. That does run. How do you know? Because there's video of it running. Okay. There is video evidence that that car is a functional car. Right. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. It makes it tough. But because the engine's not finished, does that disqualify it? If, if making the assumption that it has not run yet. Maybe it's 20 minutes away, maybe it's a day away from running. Still technically sculpture, though. But how Can many you be a master of motors winner without, having without an engine, an engine running. that actually runs? I don't think you can. Well, how many of these other engines that we looked at, are we certain they all run? Because they appear that they're complete. Are we certain they run? 50% of the cars at SEMA don't run because they were completed on Monday. I mean, the one yeah. that has a wiring harness for the injectors but's missing a camshaft? That's, we don't know that. It's just yeah, what we, we can't we, see. Exactly. Right? We can only go on what we can see. Right. Do you go by the shop's credit of having built 10-second AMG Mercedes? I mean, we could go on that. We could also... Like, 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 I'm sorry, like uh, Brule was saying, believe that there's no piston or rods or rotating assembly in the thing either. Which could be true of many of the stuff that yeah. things we're looking at. Yeah, that's what, like, like if we looked at one of the turbocharged big blocks or supercharged big blocks, we don't know that yeah. they've run for sure. Well, my car doesn't run. You can find video of it on the internet driving, but it doesn't run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stake my claim on a Ferrari. You guys can do really? what you want. I'm staking my claim on the Ferrari. You're going Ferrari. Vote me down if you need to. It's fine. I'll only hold it against you for the rest of your life. I, I, I just, I just can't, I just can't do the Ferrari. Because? It's a for, just a Ferrari. I mean, it's a Ferrari with a couple of turbos hung on it, and, you know. So it comes down to me. Yep. I'm the tiebreaker. Yep. Um, um, uh, you want to slip me a note under the table and tell me what to do? <laughs> Make a decision. Uh, it I did that just to put him in this position. Something. Is there some great BMW motor or? Ooh, Volkswagen. <laughs> do we see any good not, Volkswagen? It's not here. It's not here. No. no, not that thing. The only Volkswagen that's worth looking at here is the one with the 215 Buick in its backside. Okay. Sold me. It says Berlin on it. <laughs> <laughs> Now I know, it's, uh, and it also comes down to who entered and who didn't. So man, it's on me, Ferrari versus... I gotta go Mercedes. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Dave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What made you go that way? Um, level of effort and intent and going fast or attempting to with something really obscure versus show motor. Can't argue with your logic. Yeah. I like the intent part because we know that that thing is purposeful. I mean, it's not a matter yeah. of, oh, I made it look this way. Right. Hit every intention of making that thing It, I think, raises a point. I mean, this is the first time we've done this. We are going to run into some discussions like this, and you guys have to decide if maybe there is a rule that it's got to run. You know, I think that would but be how a do fair we prove rule. That, you know, ever. It's like ISC. Show us a video. You know, let yeah. them add gas and oil and charge a battery, yeah. it's just not practical. But well, we've made a decision, we need to move on. Okay. Vintage. I think we're all down with the Cal Creations uh, the Arden. I, I loved my twin blown Y block, but you really can't hold a candle on that thing. It's, it's amazing. The Arden, to yeah. me, the Arden does it going away. Yesterday when I was walking the floor, that car brought me to it. I mean, it was just like, whoa. I mean, out yeah. of everything in the show, that's what I walk to, just kind of naturally and instinctively. So I, I've got to go there with the art. Yeah. It was also the only car where you guys walked away and then walked back. Yeah. Every single one yeah. of you walked back. Oh, the car it. is amazing, but you can't let the car sway you. No, I'm, I'm looking, just at, the looking at the engine. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at. But yeah. you can look at that engine for hours and find more and more and more stuff. But, but that's also an interesting class to discuss for the future, because like if Kazi's Y block was here, I would go with sure. that. And that would be making power of the vintage engine right. versus what we're voting on here, which is decorating a vintage yeah. engine. Well, but the Arden head does improve the power, and Kazi's engine isn't here. 
Right. So. Exactly. <laughs> so I feel totally comfortable with that, was, that choice. That was an easy one. Um, power adder. Who do we feel like had the best power adder? Well, there's power adder and race engine, and we have to decide which is which. Correct. And then it could also be affected on who we choose for our overall, because we've been arguing between the V12 and the Nelson motor, or something else that you guys right. might bring up. And so depending on what you pick there, I think it moves the other engine into a different category. Yeah, I would think Justin Martin's engine moves into the moves into the competition engine because it's a straight up race car. You know, no intention ever to put that thing on a street. So I feel as though Martin goes to race engine. I feel as though no Nelson goes to power adder. We you know? really like Dylan's twin turbo big chief motor too. Yeah. But I But that could also be domestic if you really wanted right. to go that way. Well, that's the one over here. That's that Nova. I mean, I feel like if I feel like if Martin Martin's car goes to race engine against Myers, because again, they're both drag race cars and will never be driven on the street. I would like to point out, almost every car here has a power adder of some type, right? It's so prevalent, yeah. so it can't just be it's a really great engine with a power adder. It has to be some sort of this power adder was done in a better way, or is more significant than just okay. an engine that has a power. Adder, I appreciate right? that clarification. Yeah. That's my take on that. Okay. Well, compound turbo diesel. Ooh. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. When compound you get right turbo down diesel, down for, if, we're, if that is the, if we're looking at again, like an intent thing. Yeah. That's got to be the one for power out. Yeah. I mean, that's all of it. That's, that's impossible to argue against. Yeah. With the criteria that you specified, it kind of clarifies yeah. the category. That's and great. I think that's it. Okay. So then race engine comes down to the Orange Nova, the Dragster, is that it? Pretty much, yeah. So we need your insight into that A-Fuel engine to see if it's really above and beyond anything else in its class. Well, in many ways, yeah. It's like the third fastest car in the history of the category. It is top five at ET of all time. I mean, it runs five teens at 280 plus. Not that and many her cars. dad builds it, and he's not a professional engine builder, right? Correct. Yeah. It's. And in terms of just for uh, an evolutionary piece, even though it is, you know, a Hemi or whatever, old style architecture, but like that is when, when we look at what, it, what an injected nitro burning Hemi did in 1965 or 1970 to what that thing's doing now on the same level of displacement, now really cylinder heads and everything are different. Right. It's a pretty neat end to an evolutionary scale, I think. Yeah, and like we were saying last night, it's probably the most powerful naturally aspirated racing engine, racing in the world. engine yeah. class anywhere yeah um what's the name of the guy with the orange nova martin. justin martin we were more impressed with that when we were believing that it was a stock head configuration yeah. Yeah. it is a spread port deal does that still make it a standout in what it's doing i mean it's a fast yeah car. no I, I believe that it does i mean it's uh, again car runs four o's it's a it's a top two if not the it's either the record holder number two right now but it's one of the best uh, limited drag radio car in the world you had to admire the scars on it. Really. Right, it battle was scars, crusty. man. Yeah. It was but if you, back together. Well, no, and if we, it, well, and if we disassembled that that engine, the A fuel engine, you'd see that that block spread welded oh, back sure. together a hundred times, and the cylinder yeah. heads have been Frankenstein back together a hundred times. That thing's lived the lives of ten men, just like Martin's has. Yeah, I mean that 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 thing's run hard enough that it gets the pistons taken out at night on a good day. Right. Okay. So, Martin or Megan? Man, I'm going old school. I'm going Megan. 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 Okay. Cool. So now the two most difficult. We've got to figure out our overall, and then we got to fill that slot. And we got four spots. Okay. I feel comfortable taking the Ford cloned LS out of the picture. Yeah, that, that's got to go. Yeah. Artistic credit, but it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I criticized the thing yesterday. I jokingly said, oh, you don't want to make it look slow. So it right. looks like a Ford. Right. You know, I, that's a joke. I really appreciate what he did with yeah. the thing. Right. But it's not a motor master. It's a dress up master. Master of disguise. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you should do it. So this is, well, for, this is for domestic, right? This is between overall and domestic. Okay. Yeah, we're kind of like, we have three engines right now that we're talking about. The V12 LS, yep. Nelson's motor, and the Schubeck, the Schubeck 904. So those three, one of them is going to be overall, 
and one of them is going to end up in domestic. Right. And you just made a statement a minute ago we didn't even discuss last night, which is Schubeck for overall. Schubeck, okay, let's talk, let's take Nelson out. Schubeck motor versus V12, more innovation in Schubeck's motor. Agree. Yes, I agree. That's what I brought up this morning was, you know, there's just as much innovation in that, if not more. I mean, with the overhead cam stuff, he still ended up doing a block, he did a crank, he did an everything. I, I for the, for me, if I'm sitting here with the deal, I'd put shoe back in overall and I'd put V12 LS in as domestic. Yeah, because now the whole argument of Nelson versus uh, V12 moves to the domestic category. Yeah. Because they're both scratch builds, but one was built in an era where it was a lot harder to do. Right, like manual machining to right. do that thing. The, and that has been the chip on my shoulder about that thing. It's like, this thing's been around 20 plus years, but why does that matter? Because nobody's really duplicated it. I mean, it's kind of an area, but... Mike was beating on it a little last night, like, no, it's inefficient, you know, fr friction, all that. Why 904 cubic inches? Kojima does you know, not dig it. No, you know why it's 904 cubic inches? Because, because he you could. can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I think honestly, you know, not recognizing this this kind of, this thing's unique, right? This thing's unique. We're looking for the coolest, best motors in the in the place. And I think recognizing a guy that did something like that 20 years ago, right. in the face of what this is for the very first year, I think it's totally worthy. So Schubeck overall. Yeah. Wow. What a turnaround from last night. Yeah. Isn't it? When we were just <laughs> heated Glad about that other stuff. So now we have to argue out Nelson versus V12 for domestic category. Yeah. Thinking more on the on the V12, I feel like it's not even Ardema levels of like creativity. Well, that's that's levels of insanity. Yeah. It's in the same vein though. It's taking production stuff and making it your the own. V12. Yeah. Yeah. It, it 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 does have some finished quality to it that would you know, go past our demon stuff. But, but oh, it he, does, but it doesn't have here. nearly the finish of most of the Nelson stuff at the show. Where, where is the, your the head The question at, I have is, well, the three that we're talking about between Tom, the V12, and are either one of them, do they have a place to go? They both deserve to be somewhere. Yeah, one of them on the current structure will be out completely. I don't like Unless that. we go through the list and see if it fits someplace else and is Move better. Kojima's here. He can be the deal breaker. Uh, we're down to one category locking this thing in. Okay. And okay. we're debating right. between Nelson and the uh, V12 LS for domestic. They're both like kind of neat cars. And uh, they're both really good. You're chipper this morning. <laughs> um... She it's super hard, but I would say the V12 because I, I just, it's impressive how they developed their own castings and things and their own cores and they did their own core box and they invested in all that tooling. And, um, you know, the Nelson car is badass, but it's sort of like... He developed his own intake manifold and did all the tooling yeah, for I, that. Yeah, I, 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 I have a real problem turbos. with... Tom's thing not being any place in this competition at that level of it build. It seems pretty uncomfortable. It, it seems unfair be, yeah. because he deserves to be someplace. Uh, I mean, and I don't know what that is, but when we're looking at one of the top three engines that we've seen, and all of a sudden now it's nowhere, that's, I'm yeah. not, I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable. Do you feel like you need to look into the power outer, outer category again? Is he doing something that no one else is doing? I mean, because well, if we, we, if we, so if we, if we, if we take his engine and put it next to the, the, the compound turbocharged Cummins, so, Tom's got way more going on than that does in terms of innovation. So we talked about compound is unique, right? But in the diesel spectrum, not that. is right. it it's, really unique? Right, it's not no. that unique. You gotta get it right and everything else. But it, but in terms of, if, if if the argument becomes Tom's engine is a power adder engine versus the diesel is a power adder engine, I'm taking Tom's engine seven, seven days out of seven. So really what we're talking about now is Nelson for power adder. Yeah. V12 for overall, and then we need to come up with domestic. No, right? v, no. V12, V12 for, for domestic. domestic. Schubeck for overall. So does that fill every spot? Yeah. Does that make us done? Here's uh, here's what you guys have come up with. Do you have any sense of the fan favorite yet? No. So the fan favorite will be posted today, and people will have until Friday to vote. Oh, on sweet. That. Okay, That's a good cool. way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Do the paperwork and get ready to make some announcements. It's time to hand somebody an 85-pound trophy.
<laughs> this, it really has been a pleasure, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, oh, that was a lot of fun. And now to recap our winners again from the inaugural 2018 Masters of Motors from the SEMA Show. For the Sport Compact class, Stefan Papadakis with his Toyota 2AR Formula Drift Engine. Here you go, it's like a really badass motor. This is pretty, this is pretty good. The nostalgia category was won by Andy Leach's Blown Arden Flathead. The race engine category was taken by Megan Meyer's naturally aspirated nitro-burning Chrysler Hemi. In Power Adder, it was Tom Nelson's Twin Turbo Custom LS Engine. The domestic category was won by Matt and Shane Cornish's V12 LS. The European category was won by Mike Weiss's Twin Turbocharged Mercedes AMG V8. And the fan favorite was Danielle Lutz's custom Ford Windsor Small Block. And our first crowned winner of the Ingenuity Award, our coveted billet trophy, goes to legendary drag racer, Gentleman Joe Schubach with his 904 cubic inch quad cam Hemi engine. Oh my God, I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm the co-owner with my husband, Joe Schubach. And um, he's stuck in traffic. He's in a oh. terrible traffic jam and he said, I can't get there. So anyway, uh, I know how proud he would be, and I'm so proud, and I'm so proud of that car. We call it our baby. That wraps it up for the SEMA edition of Masters of Motors. We'll be back with more from Indy at the PRI Show. Don't forget to sign up your engine and learn more at mastersofmotors.com.